When the jumper announced that the jumper T18, with the help of the new 5-in-1 multi-protocol project, will be able to talk to the R9 receivers, well, let's be honest, that was kind of biggish news, because right now, at least before the jumper T18, when you wanted to use the Eferskai R9 system, you had to buy board transmitters and receiver directly from Eferskai. And uh, just talking about the form factor and the various levels of supports, that was, let's say, almost at least recently, at least slightly problematic. Now, when I received three weeks ago my T18, Inside of the package there was a card saying that the R9 support is still experimental, there is no failsafe, somebody else said that there is also no telemetry, and this thing, well, it's waiting for this thing to be finished. And to be honest, I think it's almost, almost finished, because today I tested how the jumper T18 with the 5-in-1 multi-protocol module binds with the R9 system, receivers from the R9 system. Does it really work? And if you would like to give it a try, today is your chance, because this is probably the most complete tutorial on this topic. The first aspect of the problem is the receiver compatibility, or rather the compatibility of the 5-in-1 multi-protocol module inside of the Jumper T18 with various Eferskai R9 receivers. And it will work with every single receiver that can be and is flashed with the ACCST Flex from the latest, of course, release of the Flex, which happened on the 2019 February. So, if you have R9 Slim, R9 Slim Plus, R9 Mini, or R9 MM, or R9 MM OTA, this is very important, it also works with the OTA, you can just flash the receiver with the Flex firmware from 2019 February, at the link somewhere there in the description, there should be at least, and then it will work. It will not work with the regular ACCST, it will not work with the receivers flashed with access, and definitely it will not work with the receivers flashed with something called access flex. Everest guy, too many versions of the firmware. Bottom line, flex. 2019-02, flash to the receiver and you are ready to go. If you don't know how to flash the receivers with the Flex firmware, there are at least a few tutorials on the internet and you can just find it without any problem. I even have one on this channel from like two years ago, so why not? The second aspect is of course the transmitter itself. It will not work out of the box with the first batch of the Jumper T18 transmitter and the multi-protocol modules inside. What you have to do, you have to flash. You have to flash both the T18 with the OpenTX that, for example, fixes the uh, crappy roller and also brings the flex support to the firmware, but also you have to flash the internal multi-protocol 5-in-1 module with the latest version. Of course, with the latest version. I was testing with the version .36 of the official Open, uh, not Open TX, uh, multi-protocol project, and it works. And it works just fine. Probably uh, right now when we are watching this video, there is already a newer version. I strongly suggest to install the latest for the multi-protocol inside of the T18. Uh, the link to the download page is in the description and also the link to the video how to exactly flash the internal multi-protocol module. If you have flashed the R9 receivers with the ACCST Flex and the T18 and the internal module with the latest firmware, you are ready to go. When both the transmitter and the receiver are flashed with the correct firmware, we can proceed with the whole setup. Let's begin with setting up the transmitter to use the Eferskai R9. So let me zoom in and 
Let's go to the menu and the internal RF module. Let's select multi protocol and as a protocol, let's scroll to the FR Sky R9. Now, uh, the next part is common for everyone who uses Flex firmware already. You either have to select 915 or 868 MHz. 800 is for Europe, 900 is basically for everywhere else. And, and that's almost all. Of course, you still have to choose the fail-safe mode. Like I mentioned previously, both the hold and the no pulses are working. The custom is not working, so just skip it. And my favorite, if you are using the SBUS or F port, then just to use hold, it will still detect the failsafe. When this is done, let's scroll to the bind and let's move the transmitter away. Now, uh, I, like I mentioned, the receiver is flashed with the flex firmware. What we have to do is we have to put it into the binding mode. That means I will have to press the small, tiny, teeny tactile button while powering everything up. And when the receiver is in the binding mode, both LEDs red and green are off. Now let's go back to the transmitter and let's select bind. Binding, uh, the red LED started to blink fast. That means it's connected, it's binding, Telemetry it's bound lost. actually. Let's Telemetry restart the recovered. receiver. And as you can see, even the transmitter is saying that the telemetry is received. Is it true that the telemetry is received? Um, let's discover sensors. As you can see, all the sensors transmitted by the, by the flight controller with the help of the R9 Mini over here were detected and they are transmitted. That means a telemetry is working. There is no, however, telemetry link from the radio to the receiver. So you will not be able to use the MSP over smartboard, but you can receive the telemetry from the, from the, from the receiver. That's more than half of the requirement. And the last thing that we should do is to check if really the receiver is working. So let's open the configurator. Let's open the receiver and when I will start moving the sticks, you should observe that, yeah, everything is working. And if you want to know the proof that failsafe is working as well, I will turn off the radio master. And in the second or two over here, you see, INAF went into the failsafe mode. That means the failsafe was correctly reported from the transmitter to the receiver and then from the receiver to the flight controller. So, as you can see, it works almost, almost not out of the box. Unfortunately, you have to flash the radio, you have to flash the module, and of course, you have to use the proper version of the receiver firmware. But besides that, it's there. Bottom line, it kind of works better than I expected because not only you do have an option to configure the face safe and you can set either hold or no pulses, still the custom face safe is not uh, available yet, but honestly with those new generations of receivers and the flight controllers, it's not really that important to have this option and also telemetry works. Great, fantastic, we, we all love the telemetry, so it's good that this thing is also working. The downsize is that, well, um, there is no power switching because the module itself is not capable of power switching. It's fixed to the one uh, output power, which is not, not great, not terrible. And also the antenna on this thing is not really a 900 megahertz. It's not even like 800 megahertz antenna. So antenna also should be replaced. But besides that, yes, you have an option. If you really, really, really want to use your R9 receivers with the T18, you definitely can do it. And uh, if you are ready to accept the downsides of lack of the transmitter power switching and uh, lack of custom failsafe setting and what else, and that really all, then great, fantastic. Although um, it 
One more time, it brings the problem that the jumper rushed to release this radio. They should have waited like two or three weeks and flash the firmware from the beginning with flash the receiver, the transmitter with the firmware that works from the beginning. So you do not have to really like fight with all of that. Hi, oh, yeah. two or three weeks, really? Is it that much to expect to get um, working hardware and the working firmware? Yeah. Okay, nevertheless, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.